This is a car that I feel like flies under the radar and a lot of people will just pass this up, but I have a personal connection to this type of car. I have had a B14 Sentra SCR before, oh, nice. um, but this is Junior and Junior is actually friends with Supi. Yes. And uh, this car, it's a uh, very, it's, it's a little different compared to what you normally would see at something like PRI. Yeah. It's, it's a, a Nissan. It's, it's not, not a Civic. A, it's not a Civic. And also, it doesn't have a turbo. It's yeah, an it's no turbo, yeah. Yeah, so tell, what are we looking at here? This is an SR20. But it's an SR20 naturally aspirated engine, four-cylinder engine. This has the Neo VVL head on it. So originally, this comes with like a VTEC setup, like the Honda V-Series and K-Series engine. We are not running the VTEC setup on this. We're running um, double load cam, so it's, uh, you know, no VTEC. So with this setup, how many liters is this now? This right here is like close to 2.5 liters. It's a big okay. bore, big stroke engine. And, and the like the Neo VVL, that never came out in the U.S., right? No, it did not. It came out in Japan and like the Nissan X-Trails, Nissan Primeras, the Pulsars, those cars. So what does this dyno at now at 2.5-ish liters? Uh, we're a little over 500 horsepower. I, I don't even know how that's possible, man. <laughs> this motor originally that came in the B14 Sentra was 140 horsepower, Correct, right? Correct, yes, yeah. Uh, how are you making that much power? Uh, it's a lot of custom parts, you know. Uh, like, like, uh, there, there's a wild Sam do yeah. <laughs> coming into my video. Sam, get out of here. This is, this is not your bad. Just kidding. Just kidding. We love you. <laughs> a lot of custom parts. It's a lot of stroke, a lot of bore. Uh, fuel plays a big role. We're on alcohol. Just a lot of custom parts, man. Camshafts, everything. Uh, Kelford provides us with custom camshafts. We test a lot of stuff with them. Uh, intakes, you know, we, just a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, you have this crazy Ram Air setup. Yeah. And also this like front fin. Yeah. Does that actually help? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's called a beam tripper. So you're allowed a certain distance between the center of the wheel to the front of the car. Um, so we're not losing anything at the top end of the track, you know. Got so it's actually it. a help. It's, it's, it, some guys may say it's a cheat, but it's it's really a it's a help kind of. It you know? essentially shortens the track just by a little bit. Maybe of? a hair, yeah. 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 So, with it all gutted and everything, how much does this weigh now? Ah, oh, the weight. All right. So we make legal class weight for most of the events that we run. Uh, it's like in the eighteen hundred pound range. I would like to say. No way. Yeah. That is so better. lightweight. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, how you're able to um, get your. Fastest time, what, what's your fastest ET on this? We've personally been, uh, best has been 9-1 at 146. Wow. So That's incredible. Yeah. I can't believe, I can't believe NA B14 Sentra. Yeah. So how much of this is still metal then? Uh, this is all metal actually. Most of the cars are all metal. The roof is metal, quarters are metal, the, you know, most so of it's metal. this is carbon. This is carbon, the hood's carbon. You know, it's not as much fiberglass and carbon as people think it is. Uh-huh. Yeah, huh. a lot of it is also, I mean, a lot of custom stuff, suspension, rear suspension is all custom. We made all of that. The roll cage, chassis work, we did all of that. So It's too bad people just don't build these cars I know. that much. You I know. know. Honestly, I think the shape of it lends to a pretty good drag car. I right? think so, yeah. I mean, it's pretty aerodynamically, it's it's not that bad, I guess, you know. It's like <laughs> almost like an EK Coupe Civic, you would say, you know. So it's not that bad. Did this start life as a SER? Yes, it did. Okay. Yeah. That's why it's two door. Yes. And you have like the SER, uh, SER uh, tail lights. I yeah, think, it's right? the original tail lights that's yeah. been on the car. The front end is all custom, like the fenders and the bumper, and that's all custom. The back bumpers, the side skirts, all custom. Huh. What a cool build. Just something so different. Because I, I saw this. 
and and from far away, you know, you don't know if it's turbo or not. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this so, this is just basically just yeah, it's just a header custom. Just header. a header. Got it. We made the header all custom. It's we actually tested a bunch of headers on this car, and this one works the best for us. Huh. Yeah. And it actually kind of helps a little bit. Uh yeah. Think? That the way it's um, positioned there, it kind of helps. Uh, the airflow, I mean, I guess it kind of helps keep us off the wall a little bit with the pressure. or keeps us, you know, keep the car planted a little bit in the front, you know. Hmm. Well, thanks for showing us your build. Thank it you. is, uh, it's, I just never expected to see something like this here at BRI. Yeah. I, I like it a lot. Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. it I, I, um, these, these cars still have a special place in my heart. And one day, hopefully, I'll get a B13 oh, SCR. Yeah. I love them, you know. They're Definitely. So, they, they're just, uh, they're the Nissan version of, I guess, the, the Civic yeah. Si, right? A little grassroots, I guess, you know? Yeah. A lot of guys started in these, and we're still playing with them. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Thank you. No problem. All right, here we are. We're continuing to find all of my favorite cars of the show. We got Eric LaFeria here. This Supra really just blew me away, the color as you call it, wasabi. Wasabi green. Wasabi green. This thing is uh, kind of crazy. Why did you want to build this on the Supra Mark IV platform? Uh, the car started <laughs> off as uh, Dewey Bowie's uh, street car, and uh, it evolved year after year. It had a 2JZ in it, and uh, we do small tire racing in the radial world, and now it's got a, a Brad Anderson, uh, Joe Hornick built Hemi in it. Can we take a look at the motor? Absolutely. This thing, you know, so I posted a picture of this on my Instagram yesterday and a lot of people are saying that's the biggest turbo they've ever seen in their life. That is a class legal uh, precision turbo 118 for LDR, limited drag radial, and that's what we're allowed, a 118 millimeter single turbo with a Hemi. It's uh, rules restricted. It's good for about 3,000 railway horsepower. It gets, uh, 3,000? Yeah, 3,000. How, how do you even dyno that? Um, the only way these days that we know how to dyno it is on a hub dyno. Um, you basically take the rear wheels off and attach the axles mechanically to the hubs, and that's how we do it. So I did poke around yesterday, and I, from my understanding, there's a couple other configurations you can run this with, right? Um, as far as like, different classes? Like to, uh, potentially you could run twin turbos or yeah. some like so the way we built the car we built it kind of modular where we could remove the single turbo kit um, add twin turbos or if the rules dictate it we can add a single centrifugal supercharger to it so mm. we've made it kind of versatile this is just unbelievable i mean how much of the actual original car is left on this so the car itself is, uh, it's still got the original roof, um, the original quarter panels, the, the rear bumper cover, the doors, it's all factory original parts. Uh, we have a composite one piece nose. Um, the windows are Lexan for safety purposes, but it's still a lot of the original super parts. Hmm. And factory headlights, um, tail lights. That's what it looks like when it's all together. What have you run ET-wise in this configuration? So a couple years ago in the original configuration, we ran as fast as uh, 623 at 234 miles an hour in the quarter mile at the World Cup race, and uh, 409 at 188 miles an hour in the eighth mile. Um, since then, we took a little time off to reconfigure the car and update it, and uh, we're hoping to improve on that pretty, pretty big for 2022. Interesting, okay. The, the thing that blows me away is how clean everything is and how finished it is. This is such a clean race car. I mean, everything, it seems like everything has really been touched on this thing. I mean, th this is just, I mean, is this just your style or you're just Yeah, kinda... I mean, I've been doing it a long time. You try to, um, you try to make it a very user-friendly race car, um, but at the same point, you want attention to details, everything, uh, a good, clean race car, well-organized, it's, it's a happy race car. So you try to do a good job on what you do. Very cool. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here? So what we've got inside is your typical uh, small tire 25.3 chassis, uh, NHRA legal to go down to 6.0 ET. Um, it's got a MoTeC M150 ECU system uh, with a Chris Delgado 
Pro Speed Pro Drag package. It's got a FuelTech FT Spark 8 ignition system. It runs a Turbo 400 m and transmission. It's got Just, your typical uh, methanol fire system in it. It's incredible. I mean, the, the fact that it looks so clean, even though there's no dash, is everything is just so nicely done. I mean, I can't believe, do you even wax the inside of it? It looks like it's so shiny. Yeah, we like to keep it clean. So. Yeah, it is, it is a beautiful race car. I, I, I would love to see, unfortunately, we're on the show floor here at PRI, so I can't see it at the track, but hopefully soon enough, we can actually see you go down the racetrack in this thing because, um, that's just definitely where it shines. It yeah, is we'll be, so cool. Um, we'll be leaving the show, and hopefully in two weeks, we'll be uh, testing down in Bradenton, Florida to get ready for the 2022 season. Mm, awesome. Cool. Well, hope to see you guys at the track, and uh, we're going to keep looking for cool builds at the show. I always have a soft spot with FDR X7s, and this one is just so wild. We got William here. You're actually a friend of hers. Yes, for many years. You let him drive your car? Yeah, we came out to uh, out to your shop, did some fun, I had a little interview, and uh, I told him, he's like, oh, do your burnout. I was like, ah, oh, you know what? You do the burnout, go for it. All of a sudden blows an oil line off the turbo, shit houses everything in there, and then we had to clean the car up to go to uh, Week Fest the following day. Uh, hurt, he's like <laughs> the heartbreaker slash parts breaker. Oh yeah. We love you though, we love you so much. But you're a big RX-7 guy. Mm -hmm. um, this thing is so wild. First of all, the paint. What is this? That's actually factory Montego blue. No way. Yep, that's actually factory color. It, it's so clean. I love the fact that everything is painted that, including um, the tube front end, oh, yeah. all of that. So what is this built for? Um, really, it was a fun street car. Originally had an NA LS3 in it, six speed in it, AC, power steering, the whole gig. I actually set it up to go road racing originally. That's what I wanted to do. And not many tracks where I'm at and I ended up just going to drag strip and playing with drag strip and then it just the snowball effect. And now the car is actually set up to run a class called XT75 in mm. radial like racing. So yeah. that's what we're doing with it now. Because you're limited on tire size. Limited on tire, down to an 88 millimeter turbo. That's pretty much resistance. Down. Down. <laughs> well, we had, just still, it's still so big. We had a 106 on it at one point. Then we went uh -huh. to a 98. Now we're on an 88 right now. I love this so much. I mean, it looks so aggressive. It's just sucking in low flying birds and all oh, yeah. of that. Small it's, children, you know. It, yeah, it's so cool. Um, so. What is this dyno at then? Um, we made 1522 on like 26 pounds. And uh, after that, we just track tune it and everything like that. Incredible. Yep. That's actually- just so casual. We should be making a neighborhood like 18, 2000. Okay. And uh, this was a 388 cubic inch motor. And then actually this motor sitting on the stand behind you is a new motor for it. And that's a 427. Oh, okay. So this is going in there. Yes. Got it. The thing that really surprises me about a lot of these builds, it just blows my mind how finished everything is in terms of going the extra mile to make sure everything looks so good and it matches and all of that. And plus on top of that, it's all function. Yeah. Yeah. We try. Can we take a look at the interior? Yeah, it's a full 25.5 cage, so it's certified to 750s. Um, M&M shifter, race column, and everything. That's a fiberglass factory style dash. Wow. So what's, the, what's your fastest ET in this thing? Um, we ran a lot of no time stuff in class trim. We've been a, a 68, a 468 um, at 156, um, but we've been faster off paint or not put the clocks on. So got it. But our goal for this thing is to run 440s in the eighth, and that's that's mm. our plan. I love that you retain the factory door handle, yeah. and there's just certain parts of it that are still factory. Oh yeah, but these are all carbon panel. That's carbon doors. It's carbon hatch. Yeah, and the fact that you painted it. Mm -hmm. It's just that flex, right? It's just super cool. Still want it to look like a factory car. I never wanted to lose the street car feel. How much wider is this versus stock? 25 mil. 25 millimeters each side. And uh, we have a uh, straight axle 8.8 .8 under it now instead of the IRS anymore. All the cooling, everything is is in the back? or no, we actually have two oh. small radiators in the front. There's two, if you look, one little tucked radiator oh, right there. Oh, wow. And it's, then one on this side over here. They almost look like oil coolers. Yep, yep. That's our radiator setup. Oh. And the car runs on alcohol, so it, it stays pretty damn cool. And you have to actually put a bunch of weights up front? Oh, that's, yeah. This car is, has a real short wheelbase, so it likes to wheelie a lot. Huh. So, yeah, we hang lead on the front trying to keep the nose down. We were talking before we started rolling that you want to bring this to LS Fest West, yeah. which we love to go to every year. There's just so many nice feature cars that uh, are potentially a little bit outside of what we normally see yeah. uh, in California or in the, on the West Coast in Las Vegas. Uh, and a lot of 
cool cars gather there. But of course, because you're so close, you can just go a little further and potentially visit. If we make the truck out like with the Frankenstein engine on Amber Boys, if we do that, then uh, yeah, we'll definitely make the four hour truck over you guys. I hate the fact that I can only take some pictures of it and see this at the show. Yeah. Because realistically, I would love to shoot this at the track you know you at the starting line doing burnouts and as you were mentioning because the front end is so light does this pull wheelies really it likes to wheelie a lot yeah. really yeah and that's, that's our biggest fight with this car is it wheeling and do you normally run a pretty um, big wheelie bar on this we're not allowed in the radio classes you're not allowed a wheelie bar oh. so that's that's the battle so got it know, got keeping it. this thing on the ground is the, that's the hard part very cool well thank you so much for showing us this oh, absolutely it's just so pretty you know the thing is with pri there's way less cars than SEMA, right? Mm -hmm. But the quality and uh, what we like, which is go fast cars, yeah. there's a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you.